Hi, welcome to this video on paper two, questions one to six. We're going to go through all the questions. This is the non-fiction reading exam where we compare a text. A 21st century one with a 19th one. This one is on the theme of cycling. So question one. So question one then, it's worth four, three marks. You get three separate questions worth one mark each. You need full sentences. What do you need to remember? Specific details. What do you need to avoid? Quote and terminology. So basically, it's um, an information retrieval question. We want to avoid single words as well. We want to make sure we have a sentence. So there we are. Question one, first one of our six. So you need to identify the keywords in the question and scan through the text to find them. And like I said, it's a search and find to attest your ability to identify information and ideas in a text. You're going to be asked to look for explicit points and implicit points. So explicit points is obvious bits. So for example, it was busy in the shop. That would be explicit. They're telling you that. And an implicit point and subtle hidden meanings. The queue snaked around half the shop. So you'd meant to imply from that that you um, it would be busy in the shop because it's snaking around in the queue. So you need to use whole sentences and keep them brief. Don't copy out whole chunks. They call that indiscriminate um, copying. Basically showing the examiner you're not too sure what the answer is. So you're just going to copy out loads of stuff. So let's look at a few teacher tips to help you with this question. Tip one, read each question twice. Very simple, but just to make sure you get the right, um, right question. T T teacher tip number two, read with the question in mind, use the highlighters, you need to pick up key evidence that will help you with the answer to the question. So highlighters are really good, however what we don't want you to do is highlight every single thing, because too much will make it difficult to work out which evidence to use. So only highlight key things for the question, and then they are all together, three teacher tips. So many of my students failed to gain full marks because they simply didn't read the question. Students need to answer in a simple sentence type answer. So for example, if the question was list four things from this part of the text about the man's physical appearance, he had wild eyes would be a correct sentence, but and just putting wild eyes is not. So it doesn't answer the question completely. It's not a sentence. So just make sure, don't be lazy, make sure you write a couple more words in your sentence to get the mark. If you can't find it, leave it. So what I mean by this is these questions are only one worth out, um, only worth one mark. It's out of forty. So don't be spending five or six minutes looking for one mark. It's not worth it. Just leave a line, leave a blank space, and if you go back to it at the end, if you've got time. So the questions are. So we're looking at the twenty-first century text called "Reinventing the World." We've got three questions on it. Number one is name one place or area where the guy has enjoyed cycling. B, name one cyclist Charles says he helped to increase the popularity of cycling. And C, give one reason why Britain is such a good place to cycle. So you're looking through the text and you're answering these three questions. So there's the 21st century text. There's a page and a half. The 21st century text will normally be a page and a half and it will normally be longer than the 19th. So the 19th century one maybe be like three quarters of a page. Uh, the 21st century one's a bit longer. So the question, first one, A, name one place or area where the guys enjoyed cycling. So you just got to find it, simple as that. And he says pretty early on in France and you could have also have had Richmond Park and you could have also had Alps of Surrey. Okay, I'd say in the mark scheme it does give you all three options, but I would say, all four options, but I would say that you should be looking at North Downs, Richmond, France. I think the Alps of Surrey one is a little bit of a funny answer, but it gives you those choice in the mark scheme. B, name one cyclist, um, Charles says has helped to increase the popularity, and he says low. So Chris Hoy, Victoria Pendleton, Bradley Wiggins, so you can add one of those three. And C, give one reason why Britain is such a good place to cycle. And then it says here that the landscape of Britain is perfect for cycling. Uh, it's a mind-boggling 10,000 miles. And it also says it has panoramic view. So again, with these sort of questions, there probably just won't be one thing. It'll probably be two or three options you can have. you just got to pick, pick one. Okay, so remember our teacher tips. Read the question twice. Highlight key information. And again, we're going to do a simple sentence. So, name one place. Um, in this instance, maybe you could just put Richmond Park, but I probably would say um, Charles Samus has enjoyed cycling in Richmond Park or the North Downs. B, name one cyclist, Chris Hoy, Victoria Pendleton. And the last one, give run reason. So I would say um, why Britain is such a good place to say Charles thinks it's a good place because the landscape is perfect. 
over 10,000 miles panoramic views. Question two on bikes. This again will be on the 21st century text and it will be question two. So there we are, it's pointed out there, number two of six. And this is the language question really. So we're looking at the effect of language. So the question is, how does Charles Smith show that cycling is an enjoyable activity? You should comment on what he says, his use of language and tone. So question two is worth 10 marks. You should be looking to make six or eight points of six to eight quotes. What are the marks given for? Clear points related to the quote, quotes to support point, terminology, what do you need to avoid waffling? So we don't want eight or nine lines for one point. Two or three lines, move on to your next point. So like I said, it's worth 10 marks, and so you should be spending 13 to 15 minutes on it. How many points? So I would be saying five to seven quotes. They love you, the example, love using quotes. As many as you can, minimum five, but try and write as many quotes as you can. You need to use a range of quotes, okay, from the beginning, middle, and end. So we don't just want you to use quotes from, right from the start, for this example here. We want you to have coverage. That means start, middle, and end. Show the examiner you've read the whole, the whole article. Show him or her that you um, have read the whole piece. So in the how question, you need to analyse the writer's use of the language. But what does analyse mean? Well, it means to examine something carefully and in detail and explain and interpret it. So in this question, you're going to comment on the effect of words and how do they make the reader feel. So the writer might have used a word to make the reader feel scared, happy, excited, miserable. So look at the choice of words and you're going to comment on that. So, so this question is where a writer deliberately uses words to achieve a special effect on the reader. So a really simple example, he awoke to a rain tapping onto his window. Okay, so tapping suggests, the word, the verb tapping suggests soft and light and sort of fairly innocent. Well, if we change the word tapping to thumping, the writer has chosen the word thumping, the verb thumping deliberately. So why has the writer chosen to do that? So instead of being light like this, now we're getting this impression that the rain is almost hammering down. Thumping is almost someone who punches someone. So a real simple sentence you could have would be, the use of the verb thumping makes the story seem angry, violent and punishing. So angry, violent and punishing, these are the words that connote with the word thumping. That is why the writer's chosen the word thumping, so to get the, the theme of angry, violence and punishment. So when I mean terminology, I mean these things, adjectives, verbs, word choice, adverbs, the forest, exaggeration, the structure of the piece, punctuation, sensory language and figurative language. And we're going to try to use these. You're not going to get marks for just saying that's an adjective, that's a bad verb, that's a um, simile. You're going to get marks for saying that it is that, but then what effect it has on the reader. However, even though we've done five to, five to eight points, you don't need to do terminology on every single thing. You don't need to do six pieces of terminology. We don't want to whack the examiner over the head on it, feel like we're pushing it. So I would say three or four times, try to use terminology in your answer. So remember the question again is, how does Charles show that cycling is enjoyable? Comment on what he says in his use of language and tone. So you're going to look for one or two word phrases, because we don't want you copying out big pieces of the their text look for one or two word phrases that make cycling seem fun and enjoyable so we're going to zoom in on a language yes we, even if we use a five or six word quote we're going to zoom in on one or two words and say why they've been chosen so there's the two um, well there's the one extract the two pages so you can look for language that makes cycling seem enjoyable so let's do a couple together firstly he says pedal power and reveling, he's reveling in the freedom of paddle power. Well, why are they using the, the word reveling? Well, reveling shows how much he enjoyed cycling. Yeah, so it's not just saying I liked it, reveling makes it sound like it's absolutely amazing. He's absolutely, he can't believe how much fun he's having. Um, inflate, so it says here, we've got an inflated sense of your sporting prowess. So inflating suggests that um, cycling um, builds confidence. And silence, the last word on this page, he says, and suddenly, so I left the traffic and now there's silence. Well, silence enjoys, he enjoys this compared to the rat race. So cycling makes him really enjoy it because instead of being stuck in traffic, he gets freedom, gets um, to have silence to think to himself. So we're going to analyse these words and phrases and explain their effect. So choking, the writer used the word choking. Why? Why has he decided, why has Charles decided to use that word? 
So what connotations? So connotations are the images or ideas associated with a word or phrase. So what connotations do we have um, with choking? Well, I would say we have suffocate, scared, pain, horror, struggle, panic. So all these are all very negative, aren't they? So the writer's chosen this to, to, to say that people in their cars, these are the things that people in their cars have. So obviously showing how great cycling is. So silence, let's look at that one as well. So what connotations does that silence have? Why has the writer chosen to use it? They could have said quiet, they could have said peace, but what does silence mean? Well, I would say silence, stillness, quiet, peace, tranquility. So if we're saying, why is the writer, how does the writer make cycling seem enjoyable? Well, we could say the use of silence suggests that if you cycle, you get a sense of quiet, peace and tranquility away from the rat race of the modern world. So how are we gonna structure our answer? So firstly, there's our question again. Firstly, we're going to use the sentence starter the writer uses. So each time, try to write the writer uses. It might sound robotic, it might sound boring, but it helps us keep focused on the question. So the writer uses, then we're going to say the adjective and technique. So the adjective is a descriptive word, but technique is, does the writer use a simile or a verb or whatever? So the writer uses the powerful adjective. The writer uses the peaceful simile. The writer uses the verb the violent verb. So I would say it's really good to do this. If you can't remember or find it tough to do the adjective, that's fine, but just make sure we have the technique. So I'm going to say the writer uses the peaceful noun silence. I'm going to talk about the use of the, the word silence. And then I'll say to show what? Well, the writer uses the peaceful noun silence to show cycling is superior to normal life. That's my point. And then I'm going to say here is my connotations of silence. So if we go back to this, yeah, these are the connotations for silence we've already talked about. So I'm going to say, silence suggests cycling gives quiet peace and tranquility. So let's put that together. The writer uses the powerful noun silence to show cycling is superior to normal life. Silence suggests cycling gives quiet peace and tranquility. So I've, I've said what word the writer has used. So I've said he used silence. And then I've said what effect does it have on the reader. Well, it suggests to the reader that the cycling is brilliant because it gives you quiet peace and tranquility. Okay, this compares to the use of the violent verb choking, which is the other word that we focused in on, which suggests that normal commuters have to suffer a painful and breathless experience on the road. So here's my little structure. So my point, then my technique, then my quote, and then I've said my connotations of my quote. So if you want to have a go on your own, try to do three separate ones like we've just done. And possible quotes you can comment on are pedal power, freedom, weave easily, inflated sense of your sporting prowess, panoramic views, the repetition of love, perfect for cycling. So these are all on that extract. So if you want to try and write um, three answers out of these seven, use your sheets to help you and we'll see how we get on. Pause the video. So when you write your answers, try to go from top to bottom. So what I mean by that is, if you've highlighted five or six things on your page, don't go from the top, then the bottom, then the middle, then the bottom, then the top. Try to do it in order so it'll make it very easy for the examiner and simpler for you. Also with that, you might notice some, a change that goes on. So you might notice the writer does something at the start and then does something at the end. You might be able to comment on the structure. So here's my five. Okay. So even though I've only done five, we could probably do seven or eight or a few more. So even though I've also done five, I've probably got eight or nine quotes in there as well. Remember, I want to do as many quotes as I can. So bound explanations, when we're explaining, so for example, when I said silent, that suggests peace and tranquility. What a lot of people tend to do is they write stuff like, the writer uses the word silence, this makes the reader want to read on, or it puts a reader's in the reader's mind, or it makes it interesting for the reader. Please don't do that. These statements are very vague and they could be made about any text. It's really important that when you do your point evidence explain, if that's the way you're structuring it, you explain why that quote, why that specific quote has been used. So this is the other ones. The use of alliteration with pedal power exaggerates the feeling that Charles feels stronger than his normal self on a bike and the freedom suggests he loves the feeling of independence. All I'm saying is why is the word freedom being used? Well it suggests he likes to be on his own. The inflated sense of ego suggests he feels more confident when biking and feels ready for anything when they're all kitted up. The writer uses the people now silence to show cycling is normal to normal life. Silence suggests cycling gives Quiet, peace and tranquility. This compares to the use of the violent verb choking, which suggests that normal communities have to suffer a painful and breathless experience. So could we have done any more? Let's go look back at the quote. Um, let's do just one straight away. So weave easily, you could say the adverb easily suggests that going through the traffic is just as easy as... Um, 
counting from one to three. Yeah, it's so easy. You can just do it easily. Um, panoramic view. So why does cycling sound great? Well, this suggests that panoramic views that you'll be able to see for miles and miles. The repetition of love is to exaggerate how much the child loves it. Perfect for cycling makes it sound like it's absolutely unique to Britain and it's absolutely made for cycling. Okay, so there you go. That's so then just remember then focus on what happens and how the language is used to support this start sentence with the writer uses you must use correct sub, uh, subject terminology not all the time so what i mean by that is it's really important you do correct so if, if it's a verb you say it's a verb if you get it wrong you will get marked down for it so in a way if you're not sure about what verbs and nouns and adjectives and similes are it's better just to say the word and not actually the sort of the word class um so use terminology but not all the time so if you're doing um, five or six points, maybe two or three of the points use terminology, explain the effect on the reader and use as many quotations as possible. Okay, question three. Um, this is basically the same as question one, the only difference being that you'll be looking at the second extract, which is the 19th century extract. This one is on Francis Willis, so pause the video if you want to read a bit about her. And like I said, it's question three. Question three is very much like question one will be on the 19th century text. Don't get stressed out. It's about the 90, it's from the 19th century. Just treat it just the same as the 21st century one. You need to identify the key words in the question and scan through the text to find them. It's testing your ability to identify information in the text. Okay. Use whole sentences but keep them brief. Brief. Don't copy out whole chunks of sentences. So there's a few teacher tips we're going to give you. So the first teacher tip is read each question twice. Read with the question in mind. Use a highlight to pick up key information. But don't be specific. Don't highlight loads of stuff because all you'll see is one big highlight bit of writing. So use the highlight just for key information. Okay, make sure that you answer in a sentence. You don't just put like a what, like for example, put if the question was name four things about somehow they look put he had wild eyes sentence don't just put wild eyes so just make sure each answer makes sense on its own so basically is a simple sentence if you can't find it leave it don't spend five minutes looking for one mark it's a 40 mark exam it's absolutely a waste of time to spend five minutes looking at it. so if you can't find it leave yourself a couple of lines you can go back to it at the end so here's the extract the questions are how old was Frances Willie when she learned to ride why is cycling especially good exercise and why did Francis Willard not choose horseback riding as form of exercise and there's a photo of Francis Willard there okay so how old is Francis Willard so all it is really simple just find it in the text shows she was 53 why is cycling especially good exercise the exercise as well uh, and equally distributed over the whole body no muscle is like to be over exercised why did Francis Willard not choose horseback riding? Basically, because it was um, expensive. So A, she was 53. B, the whole body is exercised. Or, no muscle was likely to be over-exercised. You could add either of them. And C, it's an expensive form of exercise. All of them are written into a sentence. I haven't just put whole body is exercise. I haven't just put expensive. Just write the sentence to make sure you get the mark. Okay, so question four. Question four. There it is. So question four is worth ten marks. Should be looking to make six to eight points or six to eight quotes. The marks are given to clear points related to quote, quote to support points, terminology for how the writer presents, and giving your opinion. So this question, it will probably say give your thoughts or feelings or how well does the writer do something. So give your opinion and reaction to the text. And we want to avoid waffling. Again, we don't want seven lines for one, one point. Keep your points short but to the point. So question four is your opinion. It's an evaluation. It's asking you for what you think about something. So this question is, what do you think and feel about Frances Willard's experience of learning to ride a bike? Comment on what she tells readers about how and why she learned to ride a bike, how she explains the experience of learning to ride. So basically it's asking you for two things. Content, which is what does she say about her experience of learning to ride a bike? And then number two, how does she say it? So what methods does she use to say give that to the reader? Key things to remember, it's asking for your view, so do you agree? My tip would be, if, if it asks you to agree, always agree. Don't disagree too much. Reference a question in the first line of your answer. So for example, I think that Francis was excited, disappointed, shocked. 
Um, easier to try and groove the question and it's looking for content and whether to what he says or what she says and how she says it. It's a 10 mark question so you're looking for 13 to 15 minutes. Should be looking to 5 to 7, 5 to 8 quotes, 5 to 8 points. You need to use a range of quotes from the beginning, middle and end. So not just like this where it's loads of quotes at the start. We want to use it, go all over the extract to show the examiner that we've read the whole thing. So question four is very much like question two, which is how does the writer do something, but also you're giving your own opinion. So you're going to comment on the effect of words and then say how do they make the reader feel? So what is the point of the writer using that word? So for example, if I use a really simple sentence, there was a crack in the ice. But I change it now and I say there was a giant crack in the ice. What word, that is an adjective, what effect has had, does that adjective had on the reader? So if I think of giant, I think of this sort of thing. And I, instead of it being like a small crack in the ice like this, giant suggests it's absolutely huge, gargantuan, enormous. So instead of them being a simple sentence, now it's a sentence filled with tension. So giant suggests the crack is intimidating, enormous, and emphasizes the danger. So that's why the writer's chosen it. So in this question, you're looking at terminology, which are these things here. You're not going to get a mark for just saying it's a verb or it's an adverb. You're going to say it's an adverb and then say what effect the adverb has. It's really important you try and revise these for your exam. If you use them in the exam, you're going to be doing really well. But say, for example, you haven't revised them or you can't get them into your head and you don't know them, don't try to blag it. If you get it wrong, that's worse than... Um, that's you're going to lose more marks really for get, than saying get it right. So if you don't know it's a verb, just say, say if you say for example we said the verb choking. If you don't know it's a verb, just say the word choking. It's not as good, but we don't want to get it wrong and say something like the noun choking. So make sure you try and revise these. Terminology is not needed on every point. So if you're making five to six points of eight or, eight or nine quotes, then maybe try to use it three or four times. Key things to remember. Okay, we've talked about that. What do you think and feel about her experiences to ride a bike? What she tells readers, how she explains the experience. So it's focused on your response. So it says, what do you think and feel? So try and start sentences with, at the start, I feel Francis. She makes it clear she is tired. She accepts or showing her points. So all the way through, I'm saying whether like I agree with her, what do I think about her? So read through the extract if you want to. So we're looking for language that shows her experience and learning to ride a bike. And you're going to zoom in on one or two word quotes. We don't want huge quotes. We want to zoom in on one or two word quotes. So look for language that shows her experience in learning to ride a bike and one or two word quotes. Let's do a few together. So the first line, basically first few words, it says not a single friend encouraged her to learn to ride the bike. So we could say, well, we'll talk about that in a sec. But uh, uh, she learned to ride a bike at 53. So maybe we're saying that's a bit older. Um, she, friends told it would spoil her future and break her bones. Um, here we're talking about what she needed to wear. So let's look at these bit more detail. So I would say not a, uh, 53, for example. So I would say that is quite old to begin to ride a bike. So I'd maybe comment on that. Not a single friend suggests that she's maybe quite brave. She's quite rebellious. That she's alone. That no one thinks she should do it. Breaking bones suggests that people thought she might get hurt. So I want you, your turn now, I want you to look at the abstract and try to look for three more words or phrases about her experiences about learning to ride a bike. At this stage, just highlight them and then see, just think you say to yourself, what effect do those words have? So we're going to analyse these words or phrases and explain their effect. So the first word we're going to look at is break. The quote is break the bones. So I would say the connotation, so the words and images, ideas associated with the word break. Power. Strength, fragile, shatter, destroy, ruin. So I would say it's not just going to affect her life. It's not just going to hurt her, but break her bones. So this suggests that it's going to maybe going to destroy her, going to shatter her, going to ruin her. Ingenious. She says that bikes are in ingenious machines. So what words do we link with this that tell us what she thinks about biking? Well, brain, inspiring, imaginative, clever innovative original so she doesn't just think Mike bikes are brilliant she thinks they're original she thinks they're genius okay now you on your own try to get the connotations you can pick either do connotations of vigorous or connotations of spoil why has the writer chosen these words 
So if let's do vigorous, so what connotations does it have? Why has the writer chosen to use it? Because these one and two here almost are two bullet points on the question. So I would say vigorous has connotations of strong, healthy. So why has the writer chosen to use it? Because it suggests that if if she exercises, Francis is telling us that she will feel strong and feel healthy. That's why she loves biking so much. So how are we going to structure our answer? So remember we've got to say, what does she say about her experience and how does she say it? So sample paragraph, I feel Francis had a tough experience learning to ride. The isolating adjective single suggests she was alone in her quest to ride a bike and perhaps shows a rebellious side to her. So, number one, we're going to split it into four parts. Number one, this refers back to the question and says my position straight away. So what do we think and feel about her? Well, I think and feel she had a tough experience. Number two is the technique. So what technique is the right to use? So this is the how. She has used an adjective. Yep. So, so an adjective. Other things she could have had a list, statistic, alliteration, simile. Um, they use the uh, an adjective, a describing word. Then I've got my quote. So my quote, my one word quote is single. So it, the quote was not a single friend. So this quote from the text to support my idea. Note how it's a short quote. Then my number four, I'm explaining what why the quote has been used. Well, single suggests she was alone in her quest and she probably is a rebel. There you go. So make my point, do a technique, do a quote, explain why the writer has used that quote. So I'm going to start each one with a sentence starter. I feel Francis had a tough experience. I feel Francis had an interesting experience. Or I feel she had rewarding. I think she did well. Whatever. Then we're going to use the adjective and technique. So adjective, simile, verb are the techniques. And then if I can, use an adjective to describe it. So a minute ago, what did I use? I used isolating. So my adjective was isolating and the technique was adjective. Okay, so then I'm going to use my quote. So my quote is single. And then all I'm going to say is my connotation of that. So single suggests you, what is single? What words? Do, if I say someone is single, what does the word suggest? Well, it suggests maybe alone. Um, it suggests someone who is an individual, someone who maybe is away from the norm. So I said the writer has used that to suggest she's alone because no one wanted her to ride a bike. And maybe shows she's a bit rebellious. She doesn't care what people think. And there it is again. Phil Francis had a tough experience learning to ride. The isolating adjective single suggests he was alone in a quest to ride a bike and perhaps show a rebellious side to it. So I've done my two parts of the bullet point. I've said what I think and how the writer has said what she thinks. Okay, so then another quote that was used was she describes the bike as most remarkable, ingenious and inspiring machine ever devised upon this planet. So then let's look into that, let's zoom into those quotes. So finally we see she found learning to ride a bike a wondrous thing. Then I've got my whole quote and then even though I've got a big quote there, I'm now going to zoom in onto one or two word quotes. The use of rule of three as the last sentence leaves a memorable impact on the reader. So inspiring, remarkable and genius. While the hyperbolic, so exaggerating, on this planet so why has why the writer said on this planet? Well, it suggests she thinks bike are the best invention ever made. Then I've got ingenious. I'm going to zoom in and say, why has the writer used that? This is also mirrored in the adjective ingenious, which suggests she thinks the bike is innovative and magical. Another quote the writer used, mysterious animal. Why has the writer chosen to describe the bike that way? The use of the metaphor mysterious animal suggests she thinks learning to ride is a monumental task akin to taking a wild animal. She seems to be wary and respectful of the bike but also determined to tame it. So I want you to, again to write three quotes, try to write three answers like I've just done based on these quotes or any other ones that you found. My suggestions are at 53, suffer from a lack of exercise, break my bones, spoil my future, vigorous exercise, pure natural love, remarkable ingenious. So try to write three answers based on uh, three quotes. Write your answers in order from top to bottom. So go go through the text. Don't take don't write from one quote from the bottom and then the top. Just go from top to bottom. It's a lot easier. And if you want to get top marks. Okay, look at how this thing changes. You're going to comment on the change of the feelings you have through the abstract. So it's unlikely that you're going to feel one one way all the way through. So comment on the different different feelings you have about her as you read on. So here's my seven. Again, you wouldn't need to write the seven. You'd probably be happy with four because in my red are my quotes. So there I've got loads and loads of quotes. Even with four points, you should try to make at least five. But even in my four points here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quotes. Try to do as many quotes as you can though. 
So let's look at each one in detail. So my quote is 53. I feel Frances is a brave person as she learns to ride a bike at 53. This would be very unusual in the 19th century for a woman to do this, so it suggests she's headstrong and not worried about what people think. Okay, so I've said what I think about her, I've said the quote, and I've said why that quote's being used. Break my bones and spoil. I feel she was determined to keep going even though friends she would break my bones and spoil my future. The violent verb break suggests pain so shows how much she wanted to learn to ride. Spoil suggests it could wreck her life if things went wrong. However, I feel she did have supportive people around her as they no, raised no objection when she said she was going to carry on anyway. It suggests her friends and family know she is headstrong too and will carry on regardless. I think learning to ride opened up Frances' eyes to another way to exercise. She hated walking and wanted vigorous exercise. This adjective suggests she wants to do an activity that is energetic and made her feel strong and healthy. We can tell she found learning to ride exciting as she had a natural love for adventure and has a way to prove people wrong. People thought I could not do it at my age. Finally, we see she found learning to ride a wondrous thing. The use of rule of three as the last sentence leaves a memorable impact on the reader, while the hyperbolic on this planet suggests she thinks bikes are the best invention ever made. This is also mirrored in the adjective ingenious, which suggests she thinks the bike is innovative and magical. So there you go. <clears throat> Seven points. All of them say how I feel, what technique's been used, why the writer has used that word. There they are, all on the word page. Here's a 7 out of 10 example if you want to read that as well. Here's a 4 out of 10 example if you want to pause and read that. So banned explanations, okay, don't put anything like it makes the reader want to read on. It puts a reader in the reader's image in the reader's mind. It makes it interesting for the reader. Again, all of these things are statements are very vague and could be made about any text. To be fair, the, this is an answer made by a student who doesn't know how to answer the question. Remember, if you pick a quote, for example, giant, you're saying why that word has been used. You're not saying the word giant has been used because it makes the reader want to move on. We're, we're saying the word giant has been used to suggest that it's in enormous, gigantic, whatever. Okay, question five. So question five is um, worth four marks. Okay, it's the, it's the first compare question. There's two compare questions. It's the first one. You need to be making two points, but you need to write two quotes for each point. Yeah, so a quote from each extract. You need to avoid terminology. You don't need to use it. And lengthy exploration. So again, this is only a four mark question, so we don't want to spend too much time on it. This question wants you to synthesize information from two texts. This means you must read both texts carefully, find and then combine the info required in your answer. It's worth four marks, so you should be spending five to six minutes on it. Now you need to make two points with a quote from both extracts on each. You need to identify basic similarities and differences. You've already read both texts in the exam, so you're going to be familiar with them, so you'll just be scanning the information at this stage. You can say both texts are the same or different. Be clear which text you're talking about, so really easy way is just to use the author's names. Terminology is not needed, so you can use it if you want to, but you don't need to use loads of it, yeah, if, if any. So similar or different, so I would comment on the following things being similar or different. The ideas talked about, the point of view, the language, the structure. So language of comparison in pairs create a list of phrase that can be used to show how two things are similar, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, so basically things we're saying that are the same are likewise similarly also two as well as and both things that are different but however whereas on the other hand yet in contrast okay so left is same right is different so try to use these remember we're comparing them so try to use these in your answer to show the examiner you're comparing and contrasting you need to track through both texts for key parts about the question in this case, we're looking at how clothing equipment has changed over time. So I want you to go through the both extracts and highlight anything to do about clothing and equipment. So here's the first extract. And basically, in the first extract, it's in this little bit here. that says two paragraphs where they talk about clothing and equipment. Okay, so first of all, he says it's expensive. He spent a small fortune. Then he says he also does it to feel part of the team, so he feels streamlined, he wants to be part of the brotherhood. And then he says he uses a health helmet for safety, and then we need to pay, make a point that now this equipment is fluorescent, so it's very bright clothing that they wear. 
Well, the other extract is really only this paragraph here. So let's zoom in on that paragraph. So the main points about the clothing equipment in this one are basically it's normal clothing. She wore normal clothing. Okay, even though she thought, even though she thought it was a costume, it still was no normal clothing. So both extracts think they need a special um, equipment. In contrast to the 21st century text, it's very simple. So the other one was like a luminous, and it's not bright; it just as modest. <coughs> so 21st century. The kit is expensive, he wears a helmet, it's very bright, the clothing is worn to go faster, he thinks it's needed, he thinks it's, it's important. 19th century, it's dull clothing, it's normal clothing, and she thinks it's needed too. So how are we going to structure our answer? So overview as a whole, so you need to say what both texts, what, what you think both texts agree with or disagree with, then a quote from each one, so you, and then the same for the second point. So you need to make t two main points, two main things that you've noticed in the extract. So things they have in common or things that are different, mainly similar. So use the sentence starter, both writers. Then give your overview the main point of the question. So I'm going to say both writers agree that cycling needs special equipment and clothing. And all I need to do then is say the quote from each one. So this question is all about really picking out information. So you don't need to say this suggests or anything like that. Just give the information you found out. So both writers agree that cycling needs special equipment. St Charles says where specially bought clothing that made is lycra and makes him feel streamlined. Well, likewise, okay, I'm using that word. I'm using the word to compare. So likewise, so I'm saying what is similar, Francis thinks wearing a costume is a must. So make sure you have your quotes. Okay, so both writers agree that cycling needs special equipment. Charles wears specially bought clothing that's made of lycra and makes him feel streamlined. Likewise, Francis makes wearing a costume is a must. So my red is my main point, then my black is my quotes to back it up. Okay, and remember I'm using my adverbial, so similarly, on the other hand, likewise in contrast. Okay, let's do a second point. Now I'm going to say in both texts they differ. So I'm saying they do something differently. So in both texts they differ on the type of clothing worn. Again, just the quotes to back it up. Charles wear bright fluorescent clothing which cost a small fortune. It's suggested it's worn for cycling but also to fit into the biking brotherhood. And then in contrast, so I'm just using that word, Francis' clothing is simple, modest and due to the period has no focus on bike performance. She wears a straw hat as opposed to Charles' helmet which shows no great attention. So basically all I'm doing is all my quotes about the cl that clothing that I've picked out and I'm using that to back up my point and there it all is together and if you've got time it's only a four mark question so don't do this if you haven't got time but if you've got time finish with a summing up sentence so my one is in summary I've owed bike both agree specific biking uniform is required the 21st century gear has evolved due to the need for speed and safety okay and there it all is together pause if you want to read Okay, question six is the last one. It's a second compare question. It's the last question in the exam. It's worth 10 marks. You need to make five comparisons between the two texts. You need to make quotes from each abstract to support points of comparison. And, and you need to analyze the effect on the reader and what do you need to avoid. So we don't need loads of terminology and we don't need to waffle. So we don't need six or seven lines per point, just a couple of sentences per point. Question is, both of these texts are about cycling. Compare A, how the writer feels about cycling, B, how they make the views clear to the reader. So it's 10 marks, so you should be looking for 13 to 15 minutes. Make five points or a quote from both extracts on each. This is the most complex question on the exam, just because it's sort of a mixture of a few questions put together. You have already read both texts in the exam, so you'll be familiar with them, so we'll just be scanning at this stage. You can say both texts are the same or different. But be clear which text you're talking about. So simple trick here is just to use the author's names. Don't worry if you feel you might have repeated points you've already written in past questions. That's absolutely fine. Remember, you're looking at the same abstract for the whole for the whole exam. So it is going to be quite similar. So don't worry if you, you're repeating yourself as long as it fits the question. You're going to be asked to compare the things the two writers have said on a topic. This means picking out the similarities and differences in what they say and how they say it. If you want to get top marks, use adverbial, so things like simile, on the other hand, likewise in contrast. Look for something that is similar, but the writer has communicated it in a different way. 
Terminology is not needed, so you don't need to use it. If you want to use it a little bit, it's fine, but certainly don't use it a lot. So what is the examiner looking for? So one to two marks, basic similarities. Five to six marks, marks refers to both texts and talk about how the writer does something. Seven to eight marks make detailed comparisons. And nine to ten marks sustains so all the way through, make comparisons, showing an understanding of how, so the, how the writer has um, got their ideas across. So how are they going to do it? So you could say how the writer feels about cycling, you're just going to say what they feel. But then B, how do they make their writer, their views clear? So they might use adjectives, they might use lists, professional opinions, structure. So remember you're comparing, so try and use these words. So if you want to say something is similar, the words on the left. If you want to say things are different, try to use the words on the right. So um, language of comparison, to look at the following slides, make four sentences for each slide. So I'll let you do this on your own, but try to do two sentences, which they say is the same about the pictures, two sentences show the difference, and make sure you use the linking words that we've just looked at here. So have a look at these pictures, two sentences to show similarity, two sim sentences to show difference, and I'll let you do that yourselves. So you need to track through both the text for key parts about the question, how they feel about cycling and then highlight the key points. So if we look at this extract, this is the 21st century one and there's the 19th one. So I want you to draw a table out and hopefully you've highlighted a few things. You need to list the main points about what each extract thinks about cycling. So in Charles, so in Charles do the 21st one, what they say, and in the Francis do the 19th one and the last column in the how column list the methods the writer uses to get across this idea so I say Charles says he likes cycling he likes the freedom he thinks he looks good he likes to be part of a team he escapes the traffic and the rat race they're positive role models and it's personal to everyone so what I mean by that is he starts off the extract in a structurally way by saying how biking affects him but at the end he talks about how it affects everyone <coughs> Well, Frances, she says she likes cycling too. Um, she's a bit of a role model, so she's someone to look up to. Everyone was sort of against her doing it, and she proved them wrong. She does it for her health, and it ends in a happy way, that she's really happy of how cycling's gone. And then how do they do it? Well, they do it with structure. The um, child does it with humour. They do it with adjectives, and they use statistics. Also, Frances uses a professional opinion. She uses information from a doctor. So how are we going to structure our answer? So you're going to use the sentence starter both writers. Then give your overview main points of the question. So my main point is that both writers feel that cycling is a wonderful and the bike is a great invention. That's the main point. Then I'm going to give a short quote to back up and then explain. So <coughs> Charles says he was reveling in the freedom which suggests he's almost celebrating the fact he is on a bike. So I've used my quote and then just said why that quote has been used. So reveling suggests he's absolutely amazed. And then similarly, so I'm saying it's the same, France's complementary adjective, so I'm saying remarkable, ingenious and inspiring, they're adjectives that say how great cycling is. This is to show her love and respect for cycling. Want to get high marks? We need to use the words that we've talked about already. So here's all of mine put together. So we will look at these in detail, but I'm just saying, if you look at it, so my red is my main point, my blue is my adverbial, yeah? So just to show you, each time I'm, I'm making a main point, I might say what's the same difference, and then also I'm using every single time I'm using in contrast, however, likewise, in comparison. I'm always using those words. <coughs> here, I just want to show you, even though it looks like I've just written five paragraphs, I've probably got about 15 quotes here. So if you use seven to eight quotes, you'd be doing really, really well. So use as many quotes as you can. And again, there's all my there's my um, technique so my second part of the question how does the writer do it I've highlighted here so adjectives professional opinion personal experience verbs adjectives structure so let's look at the PEs in detail so by for to use cycling for exercise Francis says it gives vi vigorous exercise which suggests it's very full on but her use of therefore tells a reader this is one of her main reasons for cycling. She provides a professional opinion, a doctor's quote. In contrast, Giles seems to be more interested in how he looks and joining the Lycra Brotherhood. 
While Francis took cycling up in the first place to exercise, Charles has cycled since childhood. However, he seems to enjoy the freedom the cycling brings then and now. I weave easily. The verb weave suggests he's slinking through the traffic like a knife through butter. So it's saying how much he enjoys it. I'm saying the technique the writer uses, the verb, the weave, and then I'm saying what connotations weave has. They both use their personal experiences to get their views across. Frances tells the reader that people told her not to cycle or she could wreck her future, which makes the reader sympathise for her and hope she fulfils her dream. Likewise, Charles tells us about his normal day and his joy as escaping the choking roads and attaining silence. The aggressive verb choking suggests pain and struggle, which exaggerates the golden silence he gets from cycling. This makes us think it's almost heaven for him. Both writers stru use structure to show their feelings to the reader. Charles flashes back to childhood holidays which shows the experience he has with cycling. He evolves and shown how cycling affected him to the role it has for everyone. My quote to prove that is new generations of Britons. In comparison, Frances shows us her journey chronologically ending on a high. So there you go. So there's them all again. My red is my point and my blue is my adverbial. So remember, to sum up the question, it's 10 marks. Five comparisons between the two texts, quotes from each extract to support points of comparison, analyse the effect on the reader, and just avoid terminology and waffling. And that is it for the video on the cycling paper two exam question. Hopefully, it's been a, some help. Um, hopefully, you will, fingers crossed, you will do well on the exam.